Hey folks, my guest today is Peter Fishman. He has over a decade of experience running data and data adjacent teams at companies like Microsoft, Yammer, Opendoor, Playdom, and Ease. He realized that building the same type of modern data stacks at each company, which was obviously paying the butt, uh, was the opportunity that he's building today. Mozart Data, they launched in 2020. It makes it easy for anyone to set up a modern data stack without a data engineer in under an hour. That's a big promise. Peter, you ready to take us to the top? Let's do it. What, what does a modern data stack look like today? A lot of uh, folks know the individual pieces of a modern data stack, but what a modern data stack is, is uh, it's centralizing your data without sort of requiring a lot of data engineers. Give so, it a face though. Name a couple of tools today that people would like stick in a data stack. Well, I would like to think Mozart Data is the tool that people... No, besides your own, to. come on. Uh, but, uh, but beyond that, uh, people know EL tools like Fivetran and Stitch. Um, people are certainly familiar with data warehouse options, uh, the, the biggest and, and, and baddest being Snowflake, but also uh, Google BigQuery or, or Amazon Redshift. Um, and then people also think now about Transform, and they think of it in many different flavors in terms of uh, observability, data governance, uh, a lot of BI tooling, a lot of reverse ETL. So Really, it's about taking data from the silos in which it gets generated and, and turning it into something useful at the end, which is generally a chart that people will then take action on or sending it back into a system that, that people use out in the field and operationalize. And, and Peter, when folks are signing up for this and paying you, what are they, I mean, give me a sort of a sweet spot. So what are they paying on average per month to use your technology? Sure. So, uh, you know, our ACB is uh, around $20,000, but the median is around $1,000 a month. Um, okay. So uh, people are, you know, people are essentially, you know, from that getting data infrastructure. So data infrastructure can be, you know, 10 years ago would take a number of data engineers and a very big check to one of the big tech companies uh, to get started today. You know, not just with our tool, but with many tools, um, you swipe a credit card and you're off to the races, you know, for as little as, say, $6. Yep. Okay, very cool. So you guys got going on this in what year? Uh, we're a pandemic company. So we started in April of 2020. All right, 2020. And have you guys raised or did you decide to uh, bootstrap? Uh, so we did Y Combinator that summer and then raised the seed round uh, after Y Combinator. And what are they doing these days? It's what is it, one hundred hundred sixty k for seven percent, something like that. Uh, so in our class, you got the the rich price of one hundred and fifty k for seven percent, and now I believe it's one hundred and twenty five k. So our 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 company, at, you know, had an implied higher uh, cap. <laughs> uh, but pretty... then and then subsequently, we raised uh, a, a a variety of of money through other safe notes. Um, I think you'd raised four million in, in a more traditional seat after that. Is it accurate? Uh, it ended up being actually six um, through uh, kind of uh, a, a seed extension. And what was non? You said non traditional. What was non traditional about how you did it? Uh, so, in in insofar as that it was in in steps. So, typically, when you think about like an extension or a bridge, you're talking about a company that's on its like uh, sadly like its last legs and trying to figure out a way to get to that next round. And um, when we did it, we did it a little bit opportunistically, um, just because uh, I think the market for for you know, data tooling is is you know, certainly the investor market for for data tools is is really hot. I'd argue it's very advantageous to always have an open round. That means anytime you meet someone you think can help you, and they say I'd love to put money, and you can say yes, the docs are ready, the things thing, they just boom boom sign the docs, and you can get them in. Versus if you're closed, you got to spin up a whole new process. It's a it's a lot. You say wait to our Series A, right? And then you lose them. Right. Sure. The difference between you know. Uh, raising like uh, on on a signature versus you know if you're raising a price round, uh, you know there's an official close date. There's you know lining up uh, you know all of the terms and all the like not just the not just of the term sheet but of all of the sort of uh, legalese that goes back and forth about edge cases. So you know obviously uh, if you're an entrepreneur, you get into the business not to argue about sort of the edge cases of what happens when you fail. You instead only really want to think about, um, you know, how to make your business better and, you know, how to get that capital efficiently. That's right. Now, most folks in their seed around these days are selling between sort of ten and twenty percent of the business. Were you guys sort of in that same range? Yeah, I think, um, I think you, you know, you you have to sell a meaningful chunk of your company and your efforts over over the coming years. Uh, you know, when you're raising and you don't have. 
too much to show for it. Uh, the short version is you can bootstrap a company and that's always impressive. Um, but then you can also take, you know, the gas fuel and uh, try to try to capitalize on a market opportunity that you see. So yeah, we were we were selling um, what feels like in, in hindsight a large chunk of our company. And our yeah, effort. yeah, yeah. You're talking like six on like a thirty five or forty pre something like that. Yeah, I think, and then you know, valuations you know change rapidly at the early stage. So a hint of traction is really incredibly valuable. So uh, it is the case that like um, you know, I think. You can think about pre-product and and the team and and raising on your resume and your network and then thinking about having a product and being able to go into a pitch meeting just with a demo as opposed to a deck. Um, in fact, we didn't really raise uh, we didn't really raise with a with a deck um, just because uh, you know I think now people really are most interested in seeing what it is demo. that the product does. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Yep, yep, yep. So talk to me about the traction. Do you remember how you got your first customer? Tell us that story. I mean, you always you always remember your first dollar. So yeah. um, tell, tell me. So my, so first off, I'll say that my co-founder and I, this is our second time doing a company together. So 10 years ago, we started a hot sauce company together. And <laughs> I don't remember really just our first sale, but I remember our first sale to somebody that didn't have one of our last names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a really special moment for us. Um, now, in the data space, you don't really sell to, you know, I don't sell to my parents. Um, so, uh, you know, our first customers, unsurprisingly, came from our network. It was folks that wanted to not just use, you know, our product as a modern data stack, but actually really have the high touch experience of working. Who was it though, Peter? Can you name them? Are they, is sure. it, are they okay being public? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we talk about these companies all the time. So in, at the end of Y Combinator, uh, we, we made three sales and we left Y Combinator with three sales. So, um, that was Tempo, um, and, and Rippling were sort of the, the two largest. And then Gaia GPS, uh, was, was another sale. So we made three sales during Y Combinator. So one per month. So actually not that impressive, um, but like you can think of it as infinity percent growth. Uh, but yeah, those those three, like, you know, we sent out the invoices at the same time. So technically, I think the first Stripe payment came from, I, I believe the answer is Tempo, but I'm, uh, but oh, now I'm embarrassed. I bragged about remembering the first dollar. Uh, in, in reality, it's just, uh, you know, an electronic transaction. So I didn't actually receive that fistful of cash. Fair, 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 fair. Okay. Fast forward today. How many customers are you working with now? Yeah, we're working with uh, a few dozen, uh, almost forty customers, um, and um, you know, obviously, that spans a variety of sizes and stages and 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 industries. We're not specific to B two B or B two C. Peter, forty customers at that ARP who earlier the median you called it up a grand. It means you guys are doing about forty thousand bucks a month right now in revenue. Uh, well, I think it would be it would be a little bit more than that, right? So, uh, so we are doing a little bit better than that. Um, haven't hit the magical seven figures of ARR, but come on, you've got, you've got 10 days left. Can you break 83 grand a month to give them 10 I, more days? I like to think of it, by the way, I, I take the challenge on very seriously, but I like to think of the opportunity as, uh, our, 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 you know, fiscal year end in January 31st. Uh, so, uh, so, so give me, give me 41 days and we'll see, we'll see if Fair. we can make it. Okay, cool. So you, you maybe your average is not a thousand bucks a month. It's maybe more like you know fifteen hundred two grand a month, and you're more like sixty or seventy grand yeah, I think, total I think MRR. You quoted, you quoted the median. So I just see. like in many things in stats, uh, we're definitely a case where you know you have some companies that are six figure companies. Um, yeah. So the average looks a lot higher than the the median. We really do aim to service the small company that's just trying to get started in their data journey. But then we hope to service them as they become unicorns, decacorns, et cetera. We have a number of companies that have become unicorns uh, while they've been Mozart customers. We like to call that causality in practice. Uh, of course, 100%. Yeah, exactly. only, only, that's the only reason they're a unicorn now. Uh, <laughs> I'll go with maybe. The maybe, all right. in me is like, uh, maybe. Yeah. And Peter, help us understand growth rate. If you're on 60, 70 grand a month today, where were you a year ago? You remember? Uh, sure. You know, in general, we've been growing 10% month over month, which is basically a seven month double time. Um, so, you know, when, when you're in YC, hold on, Peter, you got to make this simple for my honest. You're doing about 20 grand a month a year ago. Yeah. You know, we left YC with only 20 K, but like, yeah. So if you kind of think about us as having done, uh, you know, over, over, you know, a number of doubles in the last, in the last year, you know, we had fewer than 200 K, um, at, uh, you know, at the sort of, yeah. yeah. If you double, if you doubled your revenue from a year ago twice, you went from 15 K to maybe 30 K then 30 doubled up to North of 60 at this point. I think that probably is on, on track. That's about right. 
Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Tell me more about the team. How many folks today? We are 22 people. Um, wow. How many engineers? Uh, we're, uh, we're basically 12 technicals. 12. Okay. Pretty good. What do the other 10 do? Um, you know, we do sales and marketing. Uh, we, you know, I, I'm, I think a big part of SAS, we have a, we do have a GT, we, we don't call it sales and marketing. We call it GTM. Um, so, and then on top of it, we have a lot of uh, customer support. So folks that are, that are helping teams get up and running. One of our business models is, is, is similar. I call it to like superhuman where we love to give people a push in the back. So superhuman in order to use essentially their email interface, you know, they, they make you get on a 15 minute call with them so they can explain a lot of their functionality. Um, we like to do the same. We think that really the hardest challenge in data is just getting started. So having sort of an expert by your side to make that, that start happen, we think is really valuable to our company. So a lot of our motion is not just about like uh, new ARR, but actually expansion ARR as companies really uh, get their their data systems going. Yep. We, we how, do, how many CSM reps do you have today? Uh, we have we have zero that have that title, but we have um, we have three folks that kind of uh, have like data analytics experience. Okay, and how many are sale like full time sales reps today with a quota at the company? Um, so we have a sales team of five. Uh, they all carry have, quota. Uh, so we have one AE and one head of sales that that basically are closers. Interesting. Okay, very cool. Yeah, and, uh, and then obviously net dollar retention is critical as you scale 150, 200 percent is like would be world class. Uh, the only way to get there though is if you set up your pricing tied very closely to a, you know a high value utility metric. What is that metric for you? So we didn't want to reinvent the wheel on pricing. At the end of the day, we charge very similar to many companies in the data space, which is based on compute and based on rows. Uh, so uh, this is sort of um, the the new language of data tooling. And uh, you know we didn't invent that wheel. So so it is the case that compute is a really good proxy for you know value created. So if you're essentially using your data warehouse, presumably you're getting some value out of it, and that's a that's a pretty common metric. That's that's largely how that is how Snowflake charges. Yep, just a Snowflake. Obviously, a lot of people point to them and say, you know what, they don't even feel like SaaS. It's almost pure utility based, almost like a gas bill, and that's why they have NDR that's through the roof. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, great story here, Peter. Let's wrap up with the famous five. Number one favorite book, uh, Moneyball. I'm a data okay. person. Of well, course, uh, it inspired really my career. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Yeah, I think um, in general, I'm I'm always uh, you know there there are many CEOs that I look up to, but I, I love the Stuart Butterfield example of the pivot into the tool that they were using and the great success that they had after that. And I had worked in essentially the enterprise uh, space that that was about, uh, I wor I'd worked at Yammer for a number of years. Mm -hmm. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building uh, Mozart? Uh, well, my favorite uh, tool is we use Mozart. So besides uh, your own. Uh, well, it's, I don't know. It's a, I don't know if that's a cop out, but I also love uh, mode. So I, I don't want to say I'm too partial to any BI tool, but that was um, something that really uh, it was it mode came out of uh, a tool that I had built uh, with. Well, with there are also Derek Sierra's on the show recently. That's also ex Yammer. Yammer Yammer execs were the first uh, checks into that business. Where did you write a check? Uh, I was I was the first check. I don't yeah, know. I was going to say you were the to David Sachs, or if he gave it to me. But that's uh, hysterical. So, uh, so you know, uh, so I will. I you know, of course, I'll. You know, I have to. I say we love uh, all BI tools. Many of them are downstream partners, but I, I will say that uh, I take a lot of pride in seeing the way that Mode has come along as uh, really incredibly. Uh, no, Derek gave you guys a ton of credit. I mean, I, he, we spent probably three or four minutes when I interviewed him, and he was saying how excited he was that his ex Yammer team basically backed him early on. He came on the show and talked to us. You know, they broke nineteen million dollar run rate last year, just passed a forty million dollar run rate. The growth rate he has is incredible. Uh, and it's an, an amazing tool. I think it's uh, it's an amazing way to do ad hoc analysis and real practitioners uh, really understand and respect that. Why didn't you join Mode instead of launching Mozart? <laughs> uh, well, so so uh, it was a very tough day for me. Uh, both Derek, Josh, and Ben, the three co-founders, walked into my one-on-one -on -one with Derek and explained that we're not going to have the one-on-one, -on -one, that they were leaving uh, in in a handful of weeks to go start uh, mode, I said, "Oh man, what am I doing?" Uh, but I, I I actually really loved uh, the challenges that I that I had at Microsoft at the time, and um, and and spent my time uh, on a number of different uh, Microsoft products. Uh, got to touch 
know, billions of users have that larger company experience. Your options did pretty well. I hear. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. All right. Mode's your favorite tool. Okay. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Um, I'm a five or six hour person. It's uh, not because I'm uh, like grinding the midnight oil as a startup founder, but because I've always sort of been able to oddly exist off of five or six hours of sleep. And what's your situation? Married, single kids? I recently got uh, engaged. Uh, my partner works uh, across the street, uh, not in tech, but as a news reporter. So cool. Okay. So any kids or no? Uh, we have no kids. And how old are you, Peter? I am 41. 41. Last question. Something you wish you knew when you were 20. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, th- th- there are many, there are many things like I want to kind of like go back and like in like back to the future two style bet on every like subsequent Super Bowl or, or winning. But, you know, in general, I would say, uh, you know, it's kind of okay, the ups and downs of a career. So sort of having kind of that perspective on sort of nonlinear progress being a reality of, of life and careers. And, you know, it's not about sort of getting there kind of uh, first or fastest, but sort of enjoying the ride in a cliched way. Guys, there you have a messy data to analysis ready very quickly. Uh, they launched out in 2020. They're called a COVID company. About 15,000 bucks a month in revenue a year ago, now $70,000 a month. Not reinventing the wheel here. They charge on compute and number of rows. 40 customers to date did about a $6 million seed round. Caught like a 30 to 40, maybe $50 million valuation when they did that. But team of 22 today scaling quick. 12 engineers, five on the sales team scaling nicely. Peter, thank you for taking us to the top. Thanks so much. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers. They try and do a deal live, and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.